My name is Frank Hannell. I'm a former United States Marine. I was in Vietnam in 1967 and 1968, and I'd like to read a poem to you about uh, an event that I witnessed. I'm lying in this rice field about a million miles from home. I'm lying in this rice field. I'm cold and all alone. I'm lying in this rice field. I've got a bullet in my head. An NVA just shot me, and I think I'll soon be dead. I didn't see it coming. It caught me by surprise. I was helping out this corporal. He had shrapnel in his eyes. I guess we'll both be going home but not the way we came. There'll be no late night partying. There'll be no poker games. Now one young Navy corpsman and a leather neck Marine are both lying in this rice field, dreaming a more peaceful dream. Now you might think this happened only once in a war that went on for years. It happened way too many times in all of the 16 years. So they built a great big monument in Washington, D.C., commemorating forever in black all the men. That will never come back. And at last count, it was 58,183. We're here today to honor six Volusia County residents who have been inducted into the Florida Veterans Hall of Fame. The Veterans Hall of Fame was established in 2013 to recognize veterans who had made significant contributions to their communities and to serving their fellow veterans. Dr. Frank Farmer served as a military intelligence officer with the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War and later joined the Florida National Guard as a battalion surgeon. He continued his service as a flight surgeon with the U.S. Air Force, retiring as a colonel in 2004. Meanwhile, he established a medical practice in Ormond Beach and served as president of the Florida Medical Association. From 2011 to 2012, Dr. Farmer served the state of Florida as a Surgeon General and Secretary of Health. America is a resilient country. You know, we may have divisions, we always have disagreements about things, but in the core value, America is still the greatest country in the world. It has the greatest values in the world. It treats its uh, citizens better than anywhere in the world. And in America, you can, uh, you can do what you want to do, you can achieve what you want to achieve by your own work, your own ambitions, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a boundless, uh, country. Rod Phillips is a proud combat wounded veteran who was introduced to Vietnam during the Tet Offensive in 1968. He went on to walk point, the tip of the spear, during search and destroy missions. Since his discharge in 1970, he worked in law enforcement for 38 years and has served his fellow veterans in many roles, including the 82nd Airborne Division's Honor Guard, the Vietnam Veterans of America, and Florida's Purple Heart Program. Well, we were fighting communism at that time versus terrorism today. And we did not want that communism, uh, either from Vietnam, North Vietnam, or uh, any of the other communist countries uh, that are known, uh, China and others, uh, to come onto our shores. Uh, so being, uh, you know, being raised as a patriot, um, you know, I wanted to take that war uh, over to their shores and uh, some of the most uh, intriguing Vietnamese people, uh, they're a very uh, uh, poor country, uh, but the people have a great heart. They love their country, and we just wanted to protect them as, as much as we possibly could. Jose Rosa not only served his country during two wars, he has also continued his service by helping local veterans through charitable volunteer projects. He's a past commander of VFW Post 3282 in Port Orange, and a past VFW district commander. He's also president of the Veterans Museum and Education Center in Daytona Beach, 
where he educates the public about the sacrifices made by America's veterans. When 9-11 came to this country and we were attacked, it, it's, it's a big difference than going to fight somewhere else. I say to the youngsters, honor your country, defend it, volunteer, make sure that the war stays in somewhere else. We don't want it anywhere else. We don't want war at all. But make sure it doesn't come here to, to affect your entire family and the place you live. John Brinkley was a valiant soldier who performed aircraft maintenance during World War II and the Korean War. Locally, we remember him for his dedication and persistence in founding the Veterans Museum and Education Center in Daytona Beach. Sadly, Mr. Brinkley passed away in August 2022. Today, other veterans are staffing the museum and keeping Mr. Brinkley's dream alive. My late grandfather, John Brinkley, proudly served his country in the Air Force and the Marines. In 2013, at the age of 85, he founded the Veterans Museum and Education Center, a nonprofit corporation dedicated to paying tribute to the men and women who served in our armed forces. It was his desire that his labor of love serve as a lasting legacy for future generations to recognize the service and sacrifice of our veterans and as a reminder that freedom is not free. A trauma medic, David Rose was stationed at EVAC hospitals in Pleiku and Chulai, which were capable of treating all types of traumatic injuries. After serving his country in Vietnam, Rose continued his surgical practice and continues to care for his war brothers and sisters. He also invests countless hours into veterans organization projects and works diligently to increase awareness of the plight of our war veterans. I have been to the wall many times, escorting and mentoring other Vietnam veterans, hundreds of them. I even spoke at the Vietnam Wall one time. And so in my involvement late in life with the Vietnam veterans, once a medic, always a medic, I have integrated and embedded myself and dedicated my recent years of life into helping veterans. It's literally almost all I do. Frank Hannell witnessed the horrors of combat during the Vietnam War and survived the 1968 Tet Offensive. Since leaving the military, this compassionate man has helped other veterans deal with post-traumatic stress disorder. He has also provided assistance in nominating two former military members for the Medal of Honor. I was there for a year and four days, and we had no TV, no radio, no calling home, no phones or anything. So it, we were oblivious to what was going on at home about the anti-war personnel and what they were doing. So when I, when I got there and I was discharged in California, I got to LA International Airport waiting for my flight to go back to New York, sitting at a bar with a few other Marines and one of their dads. And we were approached by anti-war personnel, hippies if you will, who came up to us, spat on us. Some of them threw some stuff at us. They called us baby killers and other names, and that was my first intro introduction to what was going on back home. I thought that America was behind what we were doing, but these people were not. I would like to take this opportunity also to say thank you to Volusia County, to the council, to all the people involved, to honor the veterans, not only in the Vietnam War, but all wars, it means a lot to us. And from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. <laughs>